Yeah. Uh, here we go. A walk that I knew would happen eventually. And after a good little run, a few years of being unbeaten, this is me. Yeah. That's the hammer in the backpack, all packed up. Walking, walking the post office after, after 4.06. So, Mike, it's yours now. You deserved it, you earned it. Taught my lazy, uh, lazy body a few lessons, you know. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people hate on your style of arm wrestling. Uh, I'm a big fan of the King's Move. Just on this walk, I'll, I'll just kind of talk about what it means to me, um, why I'm a fan of it. Um, to me, arm wrestling really is about pinning the other person's arm and that's that's the beginning and that's the end of it and so when this is the beginning and the end of it uh, there's all sorts of things that start to fall out from there like um, like the top roll okay as soon as you start to as soon as you think that, now listen, in the old days or whatever, if, if two people are banging into a hook, uh, that's cool. Very simple to, to figure out who won. Okay, but I don't think that that style of arm wrestling has really been the main way that people have arm wrestled in quite a while. As cool as it is, and yeah, you do see matches like that, and I love to see them, and uh, I don't think anybody complains when there's an awesome hook match. But I think that people have accepted that there's many styles of arm wrestling, you know. Uh, and as soon as you start to bring these different styles to the table, like outside arm wrestling, um, then uh, you also start to pull in the idea of, of slips. And specifically the underhand slip. And referee's discretion and getting the right grip. And there's gray area in all of these ideas. So what that means is if I don't get the absolute perfect grip, right away I'm disadvantaged in the set. And everybody who's arm wrestled more than a tournament or two knows that probably about half the time, um, you might not quite get the grip that you like, or you might be disadvantaged. At which point, if, if you slip, you may be in a disadvantaged position. Now, half the school of thought have an objection with this, and they'll say, well, that person should get a foul. And I think that for the most part, I think the majority of people... Uh, understand that there's this massive gray area that is best sorted out and answered with use of the strap. Which I think is generally being accepted. That strap arm wrestling takes away a lot of these very precise, very difficult calls that a referee would have to make if you were enforcing the concept of the underhand slip with perfection. And it would also have to, you'd have to spend way more time getting a perfectly fair grip on the start. Okay, so I think that the strap is just such a simple thing which has been really accepted into our culture. So then, so we've accepted the strap, All right? So here we are, strap arm wrestling. Now, now that we're in strap arm wrestling, strap arm wrestling opens up all sorts of wild stuff to happen. Like, like the king's move. You're not gonna see a king's move outside of a strap. 
<laughs> impossible. Um, and that's cool. And I think that that's where we are right now. We're in this era of strap arm wrestling. And I'll tell you, I, I knew what I was getting into pulling Michael and he outplayed me. And even though I really, really hate losing, like I, I really hate it, uh, it's also really the best gift. The best gift that you can really ever get in your life is a, is a nice lesson through loss. You just as long as you can take it on the chin and and believe me, I take it. I'm taking it well. Uh, you taught me. You taught me some good stuff, Mike. I was a little bit impatient. My ego was talking to me a little bit too much. Um, I, you know, I, I'm always trying new things in arm wrestling. You know, I'm 43 been you know professionally active for like 25 years but I'm I'm always trying new things and I really like to give them the full trial and I think that I lost some of my old ways that are the backbone of everything that that I am and I think uh, I let some of that stuff go and you've taught me Obviously, that I bring, need to bring some of that back. So thanks for that. And uh, believe me, don't think that a target isn't on your back now. And this thing, it's probably like, uh, I'm feeling like, uh, what is that guy? Schmeagle? Schmeagle and the Hobbit there. I'm going to be like, my precious. I'm going to be going down to Arkansas, knocking on your door, buddy. Anyways, you know the rules on this thing. You're just a temporary holder, my friend. In 50 years, this thing's gonna be the coolest, coolest thing in arm wrestling, legacy. Right now, what this thing was is, this thing symbolizes, you know, what we all want. One of the prizes that we all want uh, as arm wrestlers, you know, that unity, that unification, that symbol of greatness, okay? And this is not something that you own, something that moves from person to person. I think that this, this idea came about in 2015, well, actually no, 14, so it's got Barbosa's name on it, it's got John Brzezink's name on it, my name in 2016, so... You stamp your name on it. You stamp the date when you got it. You can put any alterations to this thing that you want to make while it's yours. But then you, when you lose, pass it forward. Anyways, made it to the post office. Congratulations, Michael. It was a hell of a battle. Lots of respect to you. Don't get too comfortable. <laughs>